So it turns out that the OpenAI Strawberry model that we all thought was fake actually is probably real and it looks basically like everything Reflection was promising to be and wasn't except for real this time. So OpenAI is calling this new model preview O1 and they're claiming it's a model that thinks more, that it's a model that in theory is far more capable than anything they've produced before. And curiously, they've taken down some other benchmarks and there are big questions as to how good this actually is all around. But I wanna get into kind of why they've released this now, how this is different than other vast improvements in open source, how much better this is than the current state of the art, both in closed source and open source models. And if this means I'll actually sign up for an OpenAI account again after canceling my ChatGPT subscription a few months ago because I no longer thought that OpenAI was really at the forefront of AI development. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So today on Twitter, OpenAI and Sam Altman alike said we're releasing a preview of OpenAI 01, a new series of AI models designed to spend more time thinking before they respond. These models can reason through complex tasks and solve harder problems than previous models in science, coding, and math. Now, there are some interesting ways that OpenAI benchmarked this, and there's some questions as to how good it really is and just how cherry-picked or strawberry-picked a lot of these benchmarks actually are. And it's pretty important to mention this is just a preview. This isn't the actual production version of the model. So I think that's important to keep in mind. The goal that OpenAI was going for is that this is a model that exceeds, quote, human PhD level accuracy on benchmarks of physics, biology, and chemistry problems. And then a few tests that analysts take at investment banks. The key win here is new reasoning capabilities. There are also some performance improvements where technically speaking, O1 significantly outperforms GPT-4 Omni in a number of other kind of conventional benchmarks. There's also a question if conventional benchmarks should actually even be used for this since this model is pretty different. And at the surface level, I think it's really important to mention that the wins here come from reinforcement learning, not just fine tuning. Some people might think, oh, they had better data or they just made it focus on certain areas. But this is really a relatively pure play coming from OpenAI. And especially with the benchmark questions they picked, which are PhD level physics questions, which in theory, most people who didn't take advanced math in college probably still couldn't solve. Now, why do they think this model is so much better? So technically speaking, what they've implemented here is what they're calling chain of thought reasoning, where models use an internal chain of thought to break down problems. So basically a more agentic flow and less just a raw context flow. They, of course, with anything from AI, have enhanced safety, which means that they'll be able to actually keep training this in California and that Gavin Newsom won't have anything to say about it. And curiously, there are still two versions of this. So there's the O1 main model preview and the O1 mini preview, which is meant to be faster, cheaper, and version optimized for coding tasks. So it's kind of their play on hyper-efficient inference and uh, leading with the idea of having inference being as fast as possible as being the leading value add for this model. So right now, if you have ChatGPT+, Plus, you can use this right away. It's also available as an API for Tier 5 developers, which I don't actually know what a Tier 5 developer with OpenAI is, but if you're in that club, you can use it. I canceled my ChatGPT subscription just over a month ago, so I'm not really going to dig into this too much, but I might do a stream later where I do that. And I will say, the results, at least based on their benchmarks, if they're accurate and they've been strawberry picked, are pretty impressive. So it scored 83% on the US Math Olympiad uh, test, which is in comparison to GPT-4 Omni scoring only 13%. I would say this is more chalked up to GPT-4 Omni just really not being that great in terms of complex multi-step reasoning, but that's a topic for another video. It also outperforms GPT-4 Omni on 54 of 57 MMLU subcategories. So in terms of a generalized model, I think that's actually pretty cool even though the closed source stuff is less exciting to me than open source progress. And of course, they keep mentioning collaboration with the AI Safety Institute and a number of other kind of jailbreaking tests. I still fully expect these protections probably to be surpassed relatively quick, but we'll just have to see if the people who do that actually gained access to the model. And they give some interesting ideas as to why this actually works. So they say as an early model, it doesn't yet have many of the features that make ChatGPT useful, like browsing the web for information, or interacting with it in a more kind of chat interface. But for complex reasoning tasks, this is a significant advancement that, and represents a new level of AI capability. One thing I'm curious of is how they're actually feeding in the input context, like whether or not you can just take an image of the test or if the test is already in text form and clearly tokenized and uh, clearly delineated with maybe a really complex system prompt. 
Um, basically what they're saying here is this is still very much an experimental base model that has not been tuned and that they probably wouldn't release to just everyone in the wild just yet because it would probably be kind of underwhelming. And there's some interesting demo videos of uh, a number of academics using this for a number of pretty interesting things. I don't think this is going to be good enough to write essays that beat a lot of the AI detectors that people use in college. So if that's what you were hoping for this, probably look elsewhere. But um, another interesting thing that happened with this model today, um, which again, we were pretty sure is this goofy strawberry model, is that uh, there was sort of a false start and there have been some conflicting benchmarks that have come through. So obviously, yes, this does really well in MMLU and it also does quite well with Math Olympiad tasks. But frankly, for me, I don't think a lot of people are necessarily using ChatGPT this way. I think people use these models for very small chunks and that grow on each other. So for instance, people who want to learn to code or people who want to write emails or pieces of emails. Uh, people are not necessarily jumping in and saying, just do all my work with the model, because if you're doing that, then there'd be very little reason for a lot of people to go to work. And that's a bigger concept to cover in a different video. But the curious thing here is uh, looking at competition math and uh, competition code forces. There were some really curious numbers in these initial releases and especially looking at previews from their initial developers, you have to wonder what they thought they were doing when they were referring to, yes, an unfinalized model. But then these numbers have changed quite a bit from the official numbers that Sam Altman has released and that have also come directly from OpenAI. And the specific question here has to do with accuracy. It's an attribute of LLM performance that I think is really interesting to look at because, of course, you can grok benchmarks, of course, there is factual data, of course, there are other applications and uses of these that are massively impressive, right? Like you can give them accounting problems, you can give them problems that have a lot of kind of forward loaded context. And accuracy is a really interesting thing to observe in a lot of these cases, because yes, you can have a report that reads beautifully and that reads like something that should be true. But the question of accuracy is something that's still pretty hard to automatically measure. Of course, this is why we use math benchmarks but there's so much more to accuracy than just doing math with an LLM model. And frankly, a lot of the mathematicians I know and people who do math basically as their job would never use an LLM to do this other than maybe doing busy work or kind of engineering calculations that then of course a human will check. And the question here is whether or not this new model is actually that accurate, although while also being very capable. And I think one of the more interesting examples of this was earlier today when Noam Brown was basically calling out that this model could barely play tic-tac-toe. So you have to wonder, was it really that good at solving math Olympiad problems or was it just massively overfitted to just solve math and coding problems? And frankly, I've been really underwhelmed with the coding performance of GPT-4 Omni as of late. And it's really the reason why I canceled my subscription. Of course, I use Cloud Sonnet for the most part now but it's an interesting kind of development. And what's curious is there have also been areas where people have tried to use this model and have seen pretty horrendous outputs where the model seems really confused, maybe tripping up on this whole new chain of thought reasoning model. And yes, it's a model that's not done yet. It's a model that probably still needs some work, but there are questions to be asked of why these were all scrubbed from Twitter. And uh, you know, the question of whether or not benchmarks are really that accurate is one that I think will go on until the end of time. But it's one that I think we have to think carefully about when we're looking at closed source models that a lot of us can't necessarily benchmark at scale and that we just know far less about in terms of how they actually work. So unfortunately, I am going to kind of pull a Joe Rogan here and sit on the fence and I'm going to wait to actually sign up for my chat GPT subscription again. But um, there's a good chance tomorrow I'll be doing a stream uh, digging into this. Frankly, I also found a lot of the strawberry model stuff pretty annoying and uh, I just for whatever reason, as, an, as a channel that covers a lot of open source stuff, the advancements on the closed source side, especially with OpenAI, don't really interest me a ton. But let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. So I still think there's some really interesting developments here. There's a lot of curious um, things to be unpacked with this model, especially once we see an official release of O1. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this model is great? Do you vastly prefer models like Llama 31405B from Meta? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.